What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm going to go over a list of items that I feel are essential to start surf fishing. And this is for people who might just be coming down on vacation to do like a week's worth of surf fishing and they might do that once a year. Or anybody who just living in the area and decides they want to start getting into surf fishing. This will get you started. You will have successful trips out there on the beach and you won't be missing anything that you really need out there. The first thing I'd put on my list is a pair of scissors. You're gonna use them for cutting your fish bites. I use them to cut my fresh dead shrimp. It's easier than a knife. And also if you break a rig or something, they cut through the fishing line, braided line, monofilament, fluorocarbon real well. I use Fiskars. I've had this pair for four years. There's minimal rust on it. Honestly, I could wipe it off if I wanted to, but they've, they've lasted a while. Just get you a nice sharp pair of scissors. Make sure they're stainless because salt water will rust through some cheap scissors quick. The second thing I put on my list is some pliers. You, you're gonna definitely need some pliers. Anytime you hook a toothy fish, whether that be a bluefish or a shark, I don't like putting my hand close to their mouth. I use a pair of pliers to take the hook out. Sometimes your hand's just not, not cut, cutting it anyways. The, the hook's in there real good. You need that extra grabbing force to pull it out. Get some pliers. I use these aluminum pliers. They have a, a stainless insert for the tip. Try to find some with the stainless inserts. The all aluminum ones, after grabbing a few hooks and stuff, the aluminum just, it's such a soft metal it wears out but they make them with these inserts on here. If you can see this, this part right here is separate from the aluminum screwed on. And I've had these for over a year now and they're not rusting or anything. I actually rinse them off in the salt water. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm dumb like that. I don't bring these home and rinse them again. They were like 20 bucks. I think they're, they're Booms brand, found them on Amazon. Get you a pair of these. Another item is a bait knife. You're gonna need it. If you plan on doing cut bait, you're gonna need a knife to cut a fish up. I also use it to bleed my catch. Go ahead and cut their throat, their gill plate, let them bleed out, they die faster, the meat quality is a little better. So you never know when you're gonna need a knife either. It's just always good to have a knife with you. So definitely get a bait knife. And these are like a couple bucks at the, at the tackle shop, at Walmart, wherever. Obviously one of the things you're gonna need is a surf rod. I, I'm gonna, but I'm putting it on the list because you're, if you don't have one, you gotta buy it. I did a review for these beach runner rods a while back. I'll leave the link to the video somewhere up here. I'm not sure where it's gonna put it. I'm new at this. <laughs> but check out that review. I highly recommend them. Uh, you don't wanna spend a bunch of money on your surf rod, especially if you're only gonna be coming down here for vacation, you know, every now and then, or you don't know you're gonna like the sport yet. You might go out surf fish twice and be like, I hate this, but that it's a lot easier to give up 50 bucks and it is give up 200. Now, obviously if you if you enjoy the sport, get a better rod later down the road. I've been using these for 4 years and honestly I'm I'm very pleased with them. But just any honestly any surf rod between 9 and 12 feet long is what you're going to want to buy. And then to go with your rod, you're going to need a reel and some line. I'm I'm a pen guy, so I've got two pens here. This is the Pen Battle 3 DX and then this is the Pen Pursuit 3 really comes down to how much you're willing to spend. The, the Pen Pursuit, I think it's 60 bucks, around 60 bucks. But with that said, after about a year, the drag on these starts to stick. Uh, for, for a long-term purchase, I don't recommend this. But if you're just starting out, you don't know if you're gonna like it, or you're only coming here on vacation every now and then, this is a great reel. These Pen Pursuits, they'll, they'll, be, they'll work very well. I've caught big fish on them. Plenty of pompano, it'll get the job done. But if you want to invest a little more, I'd go for the Battle DX. I'd skip the Battle 3 personally. Uh, the upgrades in the DX are well worth the 15 bucks. It's got a brass gear and it has a spool bearing, which I don't know why they got rid of the spool bearing in the regular Battle 3. That was a very poor choice by Penn. But luckily the DX comes with it. And on the reels, you're gonna want between a 4,000 and 6,000 size reel. I recommend 20 to 30 pound braided line. Uh, if you're a mono person, that's fine. Get some like 14 to 20 pound mono, it'll work too. Go to your tackle shop, local tackle shop, and, and actually pick the stuff up and feel it. You might, you might like Shimano better. You might like Daiwa better. 
You might like a 4,000 size reel, you might like a 10,000 size reel. It's, it really comes down to personal preference. So if you're able to check them out in person, definitely worth doing that. Same with the rods. And a lot of tackle shops, I know Half Hitch here in Navarre, they'll let you put a, put a reel on one of their rods and see how they pair up and, and see if it's comfortable to you. So if possible, do that with the rod too. Another tool that often gets overlooked, if you plan on keeping any fish, you're gonna want something to measure them with. Now, I don't necessarily recommend this tape measure. This thing would probably rust out after two uses out there. I have, I have a, a tape measure on my beach cart, but you're gonna need something to measure fish with because if you're keeping fish and you don't know how big they are and FWC walks up, he's not gonna care that you didn't measure it. He's gonna tell you it's too small and you're gonna be getting a fine. So get you something to measure it with. Another must need item for surf fishing is a sand spike. I make my own sand spikes. If you wanna know how to do that, I'll put the link to the video I did for making sand spikes in here. I make my own because it's much cheaper. It's real simple. You pretty much just cut an angle on one end, put a screw in, and that's to stop your rod from going all the way down. And push these down in the sand, you're ready to go. But you definitely gonna need a sand spike, so get you some sand spikes. Another must have are sinkers. And I recommend getting both pyramid style and Sputnik style. And the reason I say that is because on the days where the pyramids aren't holding, you'll at least have a backup plan. You don't have to leave the beach. You can continue to fish. Sputniks are awesome to have. Uh, in the Gulf, pyramids work 90% of the time. I rarely use Sputniks personally. Some people prefer to use them all the time. And if you find that that's what you like to do, go for it. Get your Sputniks. Don't use the pyramids anymore. Or if it's the opposite, you prefer using the pyramids, that way you know. You're starting out, try them both. These are go for like 90 cents. These are like five bucks. So it's a big difference in price. And get you a couple sizes. I'd say three and four ounce are a good size to start with. Uh, look at the lure rating on your rod. Make sure your rod can handle throwing that kind of weight. And then just get them out there. And if, if the pyramids aren't holding, like I said, switch to the Sputniks on those rough days. They'll hold bottom. And if the Sputniks not holding bottom, I go home. I don't, I don't mess with that kind of water. And the way these Sputniks work is these metal spikes, they dig down in the sand and that allows it so it won't roll around. It, it'll stay put. I mean, it's, it's there. And when it's time to retrieve, these actually get pulled out. When you, when you go to start reeling in your rod, it, it'll, these will retract like this and then it retrieves very easily. So you're not actually having to drag it through the sand the whole time. I get my Sputniks from the Sinker guy. He makes great Sputniks. Definitely recommend his product. Check him out. Another must have, in my opinion, are fish bites. I don't ever go to the beach without fish bites. I use them every time I go fishing and they consistently catch fish. These are the four flavors I pretty much use all the time. The, the green and pink shrimp, gotta have them. Uh, the orange crab, I just recently started using this and it's, it's actually working out very well. I've caught quite a few pompano on it, so it's, it's worth trying as well. And then the easy flea, I've caught more pompano on this specific flavor of fish bites this year than anything else. So definitely get you some easy flea. If I had to pick two, it'd be, it'd be the pink shrimp and the easy flea. But, but I like having them all, I like having a variety because some days they prefer this green color. And then lately, some days I've been digging this crab, so picks them up. Most tackle shops sell them. You can buy it on Amazon, buy it at Walmart, but support your local tackle shop if you can. That's, that's, their, theirs is gonna be fresher usually too. That if, if it's discolored, it's a little older, you want them to have these nice vibrant colors like this, it means they're fresher. You can use them by themselves or you can pair them up with some fresh dead frozen shrimp or live sand fleas and they'll just consistently catch fish. And those are two other bait options I highly recommend bringing out there if you can get a hold of them, are some fresh dead frozen shrimp from the tackle shop. Don't buy the stuff from Walmart, it's junk. Get you the stuff from the tackle shop, make sure it's fresh dead frozen. And then also some blanched or live sand fleas. Those are other two other awesome bait options that consistently catch fish out there. As far as what rig you should use out there, get you some pompano rigs. They'll catch pretty much every species in the surf. If you're just out here on vacation or you're just starting out, I would just stick to pompano rigs just because they're easy to use. They're readily available. You can buy them at most tackle shops. Don't buy them at Walmart. Those are garbage. Get you, get you the ones made by Salty's Pompano Rigs, Frisky Fins, Green Get'em Rigs. 
Rich Fidelich, A1A. There's so many different people making Pompano rigs now, I can't keep up. They all work. They're all essentially the same thing. It's just a hook with a float. I highly suggest making your own. It'll save you a ton of money. There's not that many knots you have to learn. Uni knot, dropper loop knot, you're ready to go. You can, you can tie your own for like less than a dollar versus six bucks at the tackle shop. And then another really nice item to have for all of your rigs is a bait binder. And there's a ton of different people who make them. I don't even know where I got this one. It's, it's, it's so old now. And you can put all your pompano rigs, Carolina rigs, fish finder rigs, whatever kind of rigs you have made up in this bait binder. And it just keeps everything nice and organized, keeps it dry. It's got a zip, this one's got a zipper on the side. I put a different, bunch of different, you know, hook sizes in there for different rigs I might be making. And this is essentially my tackle box. Definitely not essential, but it's highly recommended. If you're planning on keeping your catch, you're gonna need a cooler. And you don't need a monster cooler. You don't have to have some 45 quart Yeti out there, especially if you you know, don't have a cart because I, I'd hate to carry out a Yeti to the beach. Those things weigh about 200 pounds. I mean, there's no bears on the beach. There's nothing to worry about. Your fish will be okay. This is a 28 quart Igloo cooler. It's like, I think I paid 20 bucks at Walmart for it. I've, I've put an upper slot red and a lemon of pompano in one of these things with ice, bait, and drinks. It's plenty of room. These are a few items that aren't necessarily essential to fishing, but in my opinion are essential to be out on the beach for long periods of time. One of which is sunscreen. If your skin is exposed to the sun, you don't have a face shield on, not wearing a long sleeve fishing shirt and pants, any of your exposed skin, you're gonna need some sunscreen. It's no fun getting home and later that night getting in the shower and realizing that you are burnt and it just gets worse and worse and worse. That next day is miserable. So put it on, save yourself that headache. It's no fun, it just hurts. The sun always wins, you're not gonna beat it. Definitely recommend some sunscreen. Another item I would include is get, get you a big jug of water. This is half a gallon and in the middle of summer, it's just hot. You're in the sun, it's 90 degrees with a 100 index. It's definitely need some water. And, and not just for yourself, if you drop your reel in the sand, it's nice to have some fresh water to be able to rinse that sand and salt off. Another thing I would include in that list is a little first aid kit. I got some Band-Aids and Neosporin. If, if you cut your finger, it's nice to be able to protect it from the sand and you know, that old nasty frozen shrimp you might be using. I also got my wife and kids with me out there sometimes. And if you've got kids, sometimes a Band-Aid will fix all of their problems. I mean, they're not even cut, but they think that this Band-Aid is gonna make them feel better. So it's nice to have. I know there's been a couple times where I've cut my fingertip and you know, just having to cast with that cut, it's just not fun. Put a Band-Aid on and then you can cast and don't have to worry about it. So definitely put, bring some Band-Aids out there with some Neosporin. Another thing I, thing I recommend getting is a book bag. I got a tackle book bag. You can use any book bag, but you can put all of that stuff that you got to use every time you go surf fishing, pretty much. You can put it all in one book bag, and then you can just carry it on your back. You don't have to carry it in your hand like a tackle box. It's real convenient. It holds all your stuff. And if you're coming down on vacation, I hope you have a great time. Hope you get on some fish and have fun out in the surf. Hope it's great conditions the whole time you're here. If you're starting out surf fishing and you live in the area, I wish you the best of luck. I hope you slowly build your surf fishing arsenal and become a serious surf angler out there. Get your cart, get all your stuff, to start tearing up them pompano on a regular basis. Definitely wish you the best of luck. This is just a starting point. You're gonna buy more and more stuff. It, it's fishing. I mean, I, I you just keep buying it. I don't know, it's an addiction or something. <laughs> you can't help yourself. But definitely wish you the best of luck. Hope you have fun. Thanks for watching. If this is your first time visiting the channel, check out my other surf fishing videos. I'd really appreciate it. Like, subscribe, and comment. And until next time, take care and tight lines.